This episode of Super Carlin Brothers is brought to you by Loot Crate. Hey, brother! Ben, having rewatched Crimes of Grindelwald a few times now, there are a few scenes in particular that are really starting to stand out to me as just odd. And perhaps most especially the opening prison break scene. Like seriously, you guys, worst night of the year to transport somebody. Like a uh, kind of precious cargo. Could you not wait until morning? All right, who is ready to move us some Grindelwald? Uh, sir, it's a... Uh raining outside, maybe wait till the morning? No, 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 got to be moving them things to do golf in the morning, you know. It was let's play golf. Yeah. We do play golf on broomsticks, we call it brolf. But seriously, they're like going across the Atlantic Ocean in that carriage? Like what about the guys on brooms and what is this body switching power? Sadly, I don't think we will ever know the answer to that, but I don't even find that to be the weirdest thing. What is most peculiar to me is that the American wizarding prison is in a giant skyscraper in the middle of New York City. Sorry, what? When they talk about Azkaban, it is like the most terrifying place ever. It's out in the middle of sea and nobody has ever escaped and the guards can literally suck your soul out and are the embodiment of fear. Like, I'm sorry, America, but where are your dementors? Although, that said, Makuza is able to hold Grindelwald, the darkest wizard of all time, to that point without any issue for six months. Without dementors and everyone from Dumbledore down seems to think that they are really not a very good option for Azkaban. So maybe the question isn't, hey America, where's your Dementors? It's, uh, hey Europe, what's up with the Dementors? They seem really inhumane. Well, today we find out. <laughs> Hey guys, today's episode is brought to you by Loot Crate, specifically the Wizarding World Box. We're gonna open this up later in the episode, so make sure you stick around to see what's inside and find out how you can get 10% off on your first order. Even just the name, Azkaban, is kind of terrifying, and that is no accident. It is named after a combination of words. First, Alcatraz, the prison island off the coast of San Francisco, and also the Hebrew word Abaddon, which means the depths of Herc. And honestly, I think that's a pretty accurate description because when you sit down and think about what is happening on Azkaban for too long, it gets really rough really fast. I mean, never mind the fact that you're letting basically the embodiment of the dark arts guard the users of the dark arts. Like seriously, how did nobody see that that was a bad idea? Yes, members of the enemy army, you may guard your former allies. That, that sounds like a really good idea. Do you want retirement too? Benefits? How do you think a Dementor retires? Yeah, I retire in two years. I've got a timeshare up in Siberia. But in the wizarding world, they are not messing around at all. They are not even trying to pretend that maybe they could rehabilitate their inmates. If you are in there, it is to be tortured endlessly. And there's not really any disparity in like level of punishment that like equals the crime. Like for Sirius Black, they thought he murdered 13 people at once. So he got tortured until the end of time. That one seems maybe fair if they were, you know, accurate with their accusation. But then you have Hagrid who was not convicted of killing a girl 50 years ago. And now that something kind of similar is happening again, also tortured for the rest of time. Or Dumbledore suspected of forming a defense against the dark arts club at his school, tortured for all time. Also, I guess he did admit to plotting against the minister, but you know, whatever. But you can't deny Dumbledore's got style. Point is, they go from zero to 100 fast. And as far as I can tell, they only really seem to be handing out life sentences. If there are other punishments, they are not obvious to the wizarding world. Even Harry thinks he is going to be sent there after he blows up Aunt Marge. Come now, Harry, the ministry doesn't send people to Azkaban for blowing up their aunt. Well, I'm glad to hear you draw the line somewhere. It's like detention, expulsion, life in prison. What if you're not in school? But what's crazy is that whether they're handing out punishments in months of time or life sentences isn't even the real issue, which is crazy, cause it should be. The real issue is the Dementors. Because they are extremely cruel and dare I say, not necessary? And I say that in reference to two other prisons and one other prisoner in particular. Grindelwald. Madame Pickery tells us in Crimes of Grindelwald. He's extremely powerful. He's very persuasive. So we removed his tongue. Yes, maybe they've had to go to some drastic measures for him, but it is working. They were able to successfully keep him there for over six months and without Dementors. Then jumping ahead in his life till after his big duel with Dumbledore, he is again held in another prison, Nurmengard, one that is not Azkaban and does not use Dementors and is successfully held there 
for the rest of his life. And this should stand out as pretty significant because both of these prisons successfully hold the most dangerous prisoner of all time. And yes, I am going to go ahead and give Grindelwald that trophy since they never actually put Voldemort in prison. But my point is, other prisons seem to be getting along pretty well without Dementor, so why does Azkaban use them? Well, according to Pottermore, it all started way back in the 15th century, way before the island was actually even a prison. In fact, it was barely even an island. It might not even be naturally occurring, and it never appeared on any wizard or muggle maps. Instead, the island was created by a man named Acrisdis, who was a big time practitioner of the dark arts. On his little private island, he would just turn off the lights, bust out a canvas, and see what happened. How do you think we made that painting back there? That's right, we too are also masters of the dark arts. And also tape, tape helps a lot. Alas, it was not that kind of dark arts. It was more the kind of luring unsuspecting ships into your midst and then killing and torturing everybody on board. Doesn't look as good on canvas. But worst of all, he was never caught or convicted for any of these crimes. Again, because nobody knew the island existed at all. Ironically, of course, the punishment for the kind of crimes he was doing would have been to send him to the place where he was doing the crime, so I'm not really sure it would have worked on him at all. Eventually, though, he did die, and the disillusionment charms he placed on the island faded, and wizards began to find the island, but they did not like what they found there. It was reported that many of them couldn't even speak of what they found there, and of course, worst of all, it was teeming with Dementors who had been left there to breed for years. Now, if you're like me, the obvious solution would be like, just destroy the island as fast as possible. Like, terrible island full of dark creatures? It was fire. Sadly though, that might not have worked on the Dementors the way you'd like it to. For one, Dementors can't really die the way that normal things do because they're not really alive the way normal things are. They're more just like the literal physical manifestation of fear and despair. So even though we use the term breeding, it's not like they're actually procreating. It's more like they're causing enough fear and despair that more of them can come into existence. But in times of peace and happiness where there's not as much suffering, their numbers will wane. But it would seem that maybe that knowledge is not particularly well known within the actual wizarding world because when it came to destroying the island, most people were kind of afraid of like, well, if we destroy their home, what if they come to the mainland? Where are they gonna go? Not to mention a lot of the people who were very well versed in the dark arts thought that the island itself might attack them back if they tried to destroy it. So for the most part, they just left it alone, which I guess I can kind of understand. Like you found all these horrible monsters and it seems like you should get rid of them, but then they are just trapped on this island and they can't really get to other people and you didn't even know the island existed before. So just like, uh, leave it alone, leave it, leave it, leave it alone, leave it alone. And for a while they did until the ministry of Magic decided that regular wizard prisons on the mainland were not as effective as they used to be because of the newly instated Statute of Secrecy. Apparently wizard prison breakouts often involved a lot of like loud bangs and flashes and weird smells for some reason, but that attracted the attention of a lot of muggles. What they decided they needed was a remote location for their prison. So I think you can see where I'm going with this. Yes, they decided to responsibly design a brand new prison on a remote island, which was actually a good idea and probably what they should have done until one new minister of magic, Damocles Raoul, decided that instead they should use Azkaban. It's like sadly predictable that any bad guy in history has the same last name as a modern day Death Eater. Why do all these so obviously terrible people keep getting into positions of power? Actually, this time it was because of the statute of secrecy. Like when it was just introduced, wizards were understood understandably upset and kind of angry with muggles because now they had to just hide. And Raoul was a very harsh anti-muggle kind of guy, which is how he got elected. And his first order of business was to scrap the plans for the new prison and just send people to Azkaban instead saying, hey, free guards, you seen these Dementors? And while that was insanely inhumane, we also know that it was extremely effective and that they had no security problems at all. But certainly somebody would realize how terrible this was, right? Correct. In fact, just a few ministers later, a guy named Eldrick Diggory visited the island and was like, oh, no, 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 no. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta stop this. We gotta wrap it up, shut it down. But before his plan could get implemented, 
he died. And at that point, it had been 15 years and nobody had ever escaped and most people were too terrified to even visit the island to see what the conditions were like. And so it just sat there collecting prisoners for 300 years until one Kingsley Shacklebolt finally decided that the Dementors were not such a good idea and started using Aurors to great success instead. But he actually did still use the same island. And that is how the British Ministry of Magic, despite all of the obvious and inhumane reasons not to, ended up with the worst prison ever. So Ben, my question for you and everyone else is, what do you think? Was 300 years worth of a 100% success rate worth the Dementors? Let me know your thoughts in the towel section down below. Again, special thanks to today's sponsor, Loot Crate, specifically the Wizarding World Box. Each box has a different theme. This month's theme is travel. If you want to get your own Loot Crate, you can head over to lootcrate.com slash supercarlinbrothers and enter in promo code CARLIN to get 10% off your first order. But first of all, let's find out what's inside this box. Oh, obviously there's a shirt. There's always a shirt that says Ministry of Magic. Ooh, there's a back. Look at that. <gasps> I'm going to put it on. Oh yeah. This is the look. T-shirt over hoodie. You'll definitely look just like a wizard trying to look like a muggle if you do this. Next up we have the pin. Oh gosh, look at that. That is freaking awesome. It is a... Thestral, Woo, that is my new favorite one. Next up, I think we have some Luna Lovegood uh, sleep mask, hold on. <laughs> oh yeah, now this is how you do dark arts, right? Somebody get me a canvas. <gasps> it's got a giant snake on it for Slytherin. Oh man, that is awesome. Although you could modify the box so that's for whatever house you want. You could get like a lame eagle or badger or lion or whatever, or this awesome snake. Ooh, and then a bunch of stickers so you can put them on your luggage and you won't lose it. This one's got Thestrals on it, it's my favorite it matches my pin. And that is everything inside this month's box. Next month's theme is the beast within. So I'm thinking probably a lot of Newt's beasts or maybe like the werewolf, like ah! If you wanna make sure you get that box, again, head over to lootcrate.com slash supercarlinbrothers and enter in promo code CARLIN to get 10% off your order. Guys, thanks so much for watching. As always, please remember to leave a like on the video if you haven't already and subscribe so you don't miss any future Harry Potter action from us. If you'd like to see whether or not a Dementor could destroy a Horcrux, you can check out this video right here. Or if you'd like to find out why the Death Eaters are called Death Eaters, you can check out this video right here. But Ben, that's all I've got for you today, man. I will see you in another life, brother.